Keep yourself in the loop of everything football on the Golden State Media Concepts Football Podcast. The latest news on and off the field, be it college football, Big Ten, SCC, Big 12, Pac-12, ACC, to the NFL. We've got you covered. Listen to the Golden State Media Concepts Football Podcast. Hello and welcome to the GSMC Football Podcast. This episode is brought to you by AdamNeve.com. If you go to AdamNeve.com and type in the promo code FOOTBALL, you'll get 50% off just about any item in the store. I'm your host, Jesse Tapia, and for today's show, we're basically going to recap Week 10 and just, we're going to see to start off, we'll recap the games from Sunday, give scores and stats, just how we've usually been doing it, and then after that, we'll recap the Sunday night game in depth a little bit more. Uh, third segment, we're going to talk Dolphins Panthers for Monday night. It's going to be a fun one. And then, like usual for all the shows, we're usually just going to, for the last segment, we're just going to, just going to talk about whatever's going on in the NFL right now, anything that's interesting to me. So, might even talk, say some good things about your team, say some bad things. So, let's get into it. But first off, uh, before you get into any of that, hope everyone had a good weekend. I, I know I did. I really enjoyed, uh, Saturday night watching the U, uh, destroy Notre Dame. Uh, we'll actually talk about the U probably a little bit later in the show. I know we don't, talk too much college football on this show but for that last segment who knows maybe we will so yeah i really enjoyed that one but let's get into these scores so new orleans went went into buffalo and buffalo what happened right here what are, i feel so bad for the fans but yeah before i get into all that let's do the scores so new orleans won that one 47 to 10 drew Brees had 184 yards and no touchdowns and usually you don't see that happening when New Orleans drops at least 40 points. Mark Ingram had 21 carries, 131 yards, and three touchdowns. Alvin Kamara had another big game, 12 carries, 106 yards, one touchdown, and five receptions for 32 yards. Trey Edmonds, he probably I think he came in around garbage time once the game was pretty much over. He did well with time he was given. He had nine carries, 48 yards, and a touchdown. Michael Thomas, another game with a lot of receptions, a lot of yards, no touchdowns, though. He had nine receptions for 117 yards. Tyrod Taylor had a brutal game. He went 9 for 18, had 56 yards. Nathan Petterman, Peterman, Petterman, I don't know. I'm going to have to find that one out. But, yeah, he came in. Uh, he went 7 of 10, 79 yards, and threw for a touchdown. So, Maybe that's something I know that uh, the Bills, at least it seems like the front office has been trying to get rid of Tyrod Taylor for a while. So maybe a game like this is just going to boost that even more. But like I said, we'll get into that later on in the season. LaShawn McCoy had another bad game back to back. He had eight carries for 49 yards. Kelvin Benjamin, first game with Buffalo, three receptions, 42 yards. So yeah, Buffalo just, like I said, I feel bad for their fans right now. They started off so hot. Ooh, we're going to get this playoff drought. We're going to end it. All that, that, and then boom, Buffalo's finally turning into the old Buffalo Bills. Uh, maybe they were, um, how do you say, overachieving for most of the season so far, or maybe it's just divisional game Thursday night against the Jets is rough, and playing New Orleans, who's looking like a Super Bowl contender too in the NFC, uh, is rough also, but you know what? Buffalo was 5-3, and three. they were looking good, and most of the national riders, oh yeah, Buffalo's going to challenge New England, blah, 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 and look where we are now, Buffalo's 5-5, five and five, making me look bad, because I was really high on Buffalo too, but we'll talk, I guess we'll talk more about them in the fourth segment too. Next game, Green Bay went into Chicago, Green Bay won that one, 23-16, Brett Hundley had a pretty decent game, he went 18-25, of 25, passing the ball, he had 212 yards and a touchdown, Jamal Williams, um, cause I think, uh, is it Alex Jones, Aaron Jones? One of the Jones, yeah. He went out with an injury, so Jamal Williams came in. He had 20 carries for 67 yards. Ty Montgomery, he had 6 carries for 54 yards and a touchdown. Devontae Adams saved my fantasy team this week. Thank you for that. He had 5 receptions for 90 yards and a touchdown. Randall Cobb was the second best receiver on Green Bay. He had 3 receptions for 52 yards. Mitchell Trubisky, uh, I think probably the second best quarterback out of this rookie draft class. Uh, obviously, Deshaun Watson being the first, but we all know how what he's doing right now. Trubisky had uh, 21 completions out of 35 attempts, 297 yards, and what touchdown. And you could tell that uh, Chicago's really starting to let him be a little bit more free throwing the ball, too. Because I remember uh, in his first few games, he wasn't... He was, 
throw the ball through the ball no more than about maybe 15 16 times if that so it's good to see that Chicago's finally letting him uh, be free Jordan Howard had a yeah, he didn't have a good game at all, actually. I'm not even going to try and uh, hype it up. He had 15 carries for 54 yards. And Dontrell Iman, 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 not sure about that one either. But he was Chicago's uh, leading receiver. He had six receptions for 88 yards. And once again, Green Bay won that one, 23-16. Cleveland went into Detroit. And, of course, Detroit won that one, 38-24. Cleveland did give their fans a little glimmer of hope right there early in the, all in the game. Looked like Cleveland maybe was going to be able to pull it out. And then you have Cleveland turn into Cleveland. Uh, 13 seconds left in the first half. No timeouts. They're right there in the, near the goal line. Probably about the three or four yard line. You know what they call a QB sneak. <laughs> they called a QB sneak near the goal line with only 13 seconds left and no timeouts. And Twitter just had a field day with that one. Like, hey, Cleveland, why do you guys keep getting in your own way? It, you know, I'm just going to get into the stats. We'll talk about Cleveland in the fourth segment too, just so I can go on a little rant. But... Deshaun Kaiser, he had 232 yards, one touchdown, a rushing touchdown also, and one interception. Isaiah Crowell had 60 or 16 carries, excuse me, 90 yards and one touchdown. Seth DeValva, I think that's the tight end for Cleveland. I can't remember. I didn't watch this game. So he had uh, four receptions for 70 yards. Matt Stafford had a big game, 249 yards, three touchdowns, one interception. Amir Abdullah had 11 carries for 52 yards and one touchdown. And Golden Tate. The PPR monster had six receptions, 97 yards, and one touchdown. So, yeah, uh, Detroit won that one. Cleveland is now 0-9, I believe. And, yeah, we'll talk actually. Yeah, we're going to talk about Cleveland in the last segment. But, yeah, stay tuned for that. But uh, Pittsburgh went into Indianapolis. Pittsburgh won that one 20-17. Not very convincing game from them, but they pulled it out. Ben Roethlisberger had 19 completions on 31 attempts, 236 yards, two touchdowns, and one interception. Le'Veon Bell had a so-so game. 26 carries for 80 yards. Juju Smith-Schuster, I hope you guys listened to me when I told you to start him in your fantasy teams because he was going to have a big game. He had five receptions, 97 yards, and one touchdown. Antonio Brown had a very quiet game. Three receptions, 47 yards. Jacoby Brissett played all right. He had 14 completions out of 24 attempts, 222 yards, two touchdowns, and one interception. Frank Gore, the ageless wonder, had 17 carries for 54 yards. And Chester Rogers had six receptions for 104 yards yards and one touchdown and I was looking up these stats and I saw uh, Roger's name I was like I didn't know his first name or anything like that and I looked it up and it's not too many guys in the league anymore with the name Chester so that's a big football name right there I feel like but yeah Chester Rogers six receptions 104 yards and a touchdown the Chargers went into Jacksonville Jacksonville won that one 20 to 17 whenever the game's within three points or at least a touchdown always bet on the opposing team because the Chargers are never going to pull it out not even trying just to talk smack or hate on them it's just the truth but yeah, Jacksonville won that one 20-17. Phillip Rivers had 235 yards, two touchdowns, and an interception. Melvin Gordon was shut down. He had 16 carries, 27 yards. Austin Eckler, uh, running, he ran the ball a lot, and he caught the ball at the backfield a lot, too. He had 10 carries for 42 yards, and he had five receptions for 77 yards and two touchdowns. And I'd pump the brakes if you're thinking about picking him up. It's just one game, so maybe let's wait. Maybe pick him up and stash him on your bench, but do not start him. I know there's people out there thinking about it. Blake Bortles had... Uh, like I said, I've been saying multiple times over these last few football podcasts, if you let Blake Bortles throw the ball a lot, he's going to hurt you. Luckily, uh, Jacksonville's still able to pull this one out, but Blake Bortles threw the ball 51 times, completed it 28 times. He had 273 yards, one touchdown, and two interceptions. So let's keep the passing attempts uh, down for Blake Bortles, and Jacksonville's going to do fine. Leonard Fournette didn't have a good game. He only had 17 carries for 33 yards. Corey Grant had one run um, in the game. That one went for 67, 56 yards and a touchdown. And Alan Hearns, seven receptions for 70 yards. And I believe Marquise Lee also had uh, the only touchdown that Blake Bortles threw too. And uh, New York, the New York Jets went into Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay won that one 15 to 10. And I know I was hyping this game up a lot. I was thinking, oh yeah, McCown's going to have a good game. Powell's going to have a good game. Yeah, I forgot that when bad teams go up against bad teams, you're going to get a bad game. And that's exactly what we got. Like I said, the score is 15-10. Tampa Bay won. Josh McCown threw for 262 yards, one touchdown, one interception. Bilal Powell had 10 carries for 30 yards. Uh, Robbie Anderson, four straight games with a touchdown. Congrats to him. Four receptions, 85 yards. And like I said, he had that touchdown. And Ryan Fitzpatrick won his revenge game. He had 187 yards, one touchdown, and one interception. Classic Ryan Fitzpatrick game right there. Doug Martin, 20 carries, 51 yards, starting to slow down quite a bit. Really needing to pick it up or else I'm going to lose my fantasy. Uh, 
are coming up. I need him for this playoffs push. Deshaun Jackson had six receptions for 82 yards. Cincinnati went into Tennessee. Tennessee won that one 24-20. Andy Dalton had a pretty good game, 265 yards, two touchdowns. Joe Mixon had nine carries for 37 yards and a touchdown. A.J. Green had five receptions, 115 yards and one touchdown. And Brandon LaFell also had a good game, six receptions, 95 yards and a touchdown. Marcus Mariota, 264 yards, one touchdown, one interception. DeMarco Murray finally woke up, 14 carries, 42 yards, three total TDs. He also had four receptions for 30 yards too. And Delaney Walker had six receptions for 63 yards. Minnesota making me eat my words. They won against Washington 38-30. to Case Keenum had 304 yards, four touchdowns, two interceptions. Uh, Latavius Murray had 17 carries, 68 yards, and a touchdown. Adam Thielen, we've got to start giving him more props. He's uh, one of the better receivers in the league. He had eight receptions, 166 yards, and a touchdown. Kirk Cousins had 327 yards, one touchdown, one interception. Uh, Perine, Perrine, I'm not sure how to pronounce that one either. The running back from Washington, he had nine carries for 35 yards. Jameson Crowder had four receptions for 76 yards. And Vernon Davis had seven receptions for 76 yards also. So uh, Minnesota came out to win in that one, obviously. Uh, let's see. The Rams, they beat up on another team. Houston went into L.A., got destroyed. The Rams won that one 33-7. Or, yeah, 33-7. Tom Savage had went 18 of 36 passing the ball, 221 yards, one touchdown, two interceptions. Lamar Miller had 11 carries for 60 yards. DeAndre Hopkins had another big game, seven receptions and 111 yards. I'm sure his fantasy owners are um, taking a deep, uh, let's see, deep, uh, deep breath because of how well he's been playing since Watson came out. Jared Goff has been lighting everyone up so far this season. He had 355 yards and three touchdowns. Todd Gurley had 11 carries with 68 yards, 6 receptions, and 68 yards receiving also. So, good game overall for him. No touchdowns, but what can you say? Robert Woods, the L.A. Coliseum King, he had 8 receptions, 171 yards, and 2 touchdowns. Dallas went into Atlanta. We're going to talk about Dallas in the last segment, too. They really, really, really let me down. I was talking up uh, Dak Prescott. Oh, yeah, he doesn't need Zeke. He's going to be fine, blah, blah, blah. He's going to do good. Alfred Morris is going to do good. Dallas is going to beat Atlanta. No, they did not. Atlanta won that one 27-7. Dak Prescott only had 176 yards. He um, took off a few times, had 42 yards rushing and a touchdown. Uh, Alfred Morris had 11 carries for 53 yards. Jason Winton had seven receptions for 59 yards. Des Bryant had a bad game, I guess you want to call it. Four receptions, 39 yards. Matt Ryan had 215 yards, two touchdowns, one interception. Tevin Coleman, uh, actually before I get into that, Devontae Freeman left the game early with a concussion, and he's probably going to miss next Monday's game against Seattle. So you got Tevin Coleman, throw him in your starting lineup. But he and this Dallas game, he had 20 carries, 83 yards, and a touchdown. And Julio Jones, once again, quiet, six receptions, 57 yards. So, Julio, whenever you want to step up, that'd be great. We really need you on our fantasy teams. And I'm sure you guys hear me talk a lot about my fantasy teams, and that you say, oh, you have all these players. I play in three different leagues right now. So, yeah, I mean, I got a lot of players in each different league, but yeah, I'm just going to be, just get used to that. So, the New York Giants went into San Francisco. This was the toilet bowl right here. San Francisco. I feel like all the bad picks that I made this week, all the ones that I lost, like Dallas, that was a bad pick that I made. Let's see. I picked Washington, another bad pick. Uh, let's see who else. I think I picked Tennessee. I picked the Jets. That's another one I lost. Uh, Jacksonville, I picked them. Let's see. I picked Detroit, thankfully. I almost went with Cleveland for some reason. I picked Chicago. That's another bad pick. So yeah, San Francisco, I feel like that should cancel out all the pit, bad picks that I made, uh, made this um, for week 10 because San Francisco was o and A. I went out on a limb, not really a limb because, I mean, the Giants are now, I guess you could say they're the second worst team in the league. We all know that Cleveland owns that one. But um, yeah, the Giants, uh, or not the Giants, that's baseball, but the 49ers finally came away with their first win. They won 31-21. Eli Manning had 273 yards, two touchdowns. Orleans Darkwa, he had 40, 14 carries, 70 yards. Sterling Shepard had 11 receptions for 142 yards. C.J. Bethard, I'm not completely sure how to say his last name. Is it Bethard? Is it Bethard? Is it Bethard? I'm not sure. I keep saying Bethard, so I'm going to go with that. But he had uh, 28 yards, two touchdowns, one interception. Carlos Hyde had 17 carries for 98 yards. Garrett Selleck, not to be confused with Brant Selleck. His brother had four receptions for 67 yards and a touchdown. And Marquise Goodwin had one reception for 87 yards and a touchdown. So, 
yeah, congrats to the 49ers on that one. Finally got their first win. Uh, as of um, now, after this week, I don't need to pick them anymore. I'm going to stay on my high horse right there. Yeah, I picked the Niners first win. I also picked them last week against the Cardinals, but we don't talk about that. But yeah, as far as it all goes, not picking the 49ers again. They finally got their win, and congrats to them. New England won their Sunday night game against Denver, and I'm not really going to go in too much into it because we're going to talk about it in the next segment. So uh, I'll just give you the score for that one. New England beat the brakes off of Denver, 41-16. Uh, yeah, like I said, we're just going to talk about that one in the next segment. So uh, if you missed any or just... Yeah, if you missed any of the scores I went over earlier, just rewind it back a bit. And other than that, that's going to be it for the first segment. And like I said, we're going to talk more about New England and Denver in the next one. So stay tuned. This is the GSMC Football Podcast. Hey, are you looking to spice things up in the bedroom? Have you been fan- uh, fantasizing about surprising your lover with an adventurous new toy or adult movie? Well, AdamandEve.com has an offer you're not going to be able to resist. If you go to AdamandEve.com, and for a limited time only, you'll get 50% off just about any item. But that's not all they're offering. Oh, no. When you select your one item at 50% off, you're also going to receive three free adult DVDs. You know, just in case you need that little inspiration. Plus, a free extra gift so essential, I can't even mention it on this podcast. And to top it all off, they're even willing to throw in free shipping on your entire order. And we all know how that we love that free shipping. And no, they're not kidding about any of this. So check out adamandeve.com today for this special offer. Get 50% off one item when you type in the promo code FOOTBALL for the offer code upon checkout. When you do that, you'll get three free DVDs, a free extra gift, and that free shipping. Just use the offer code FOOTBALL. It's F-O-O-T-B-A-L-L at adamandeve.com. Again, that's F-O-O-T-B-A-L-L football at adamandeve.com. Alright, and welcome back to the GSMC Football Podcast. In the last segment, we recapped each game that was played on Sunday for Week 10. Talked about the 49ers and their first win. Talked about Cleveland and them uh, running a QB sneak with 13 seconds left in the first half. Talked about how I was wrong about Minnesota. And for this one, we're going to talk about how New England just destroyed Denver on NBC National TV. But yeah, let's talk about New England. They said, uh, mentioned in the last, towards the end of the last segment, but I'll say it again. New England went into Denver. They won that game 41 to 16. Tom Brady, everyone's favorite quarterback. Just kidding. It's actually, he's actually pretty split. Uh, people are pretty split on whether they like him or not. It's pretty much you love him or you hate him. I think I'm one of the few guys who fall in the middle. I mean, I'm a Dolphins fan, so Tom Brady kind of has hurt my feelings a lot over the years, but still one of the best quarterbacks of all time. Probably the best. Sorry, Dan Marino, but. Yeah, Tom Brady had 266 yards. I'm going to get a lot of heat for that one. But Tom Brady had 266 yards, three touchdowns. Deion Lewis had 14 carries for 55 yards, one touchdown, and one kickoff return touchdown. Rob Gronkowski, four receptions, 74 yards. Brandon Cooks had six receptions for 74 yards. Brock Osweiler, everyone's favorite quarterback. Just kidding. He had 221 yards, one touchdown, one interception. C.J. Anderson, you're starting to see his carries go down more and more. He only had 10 carries for 54 yards. Emmanuel Sanders, if you started him somehow this week, congrats to you. He had six receptions for 137 yards. And Demarius Thomas, still holding it down for the for Denver Broncos. Still showing that he could play even with whatever quarterback they throw out there. He had five receptions for 44 yards and a touchdown. Now let's get into the summary. Scoring summary, I should say. First quarter, Rex Burkhead caught a 14-yard pass from Tom Brady for a touchdown. That made it 7-0. Uh, about a few minutes after that, Brandon McManus had a 39-yard field, which made it 7-3. New England still up. And then Deion Lewis had a 103-yard kickoff, uh, kickoff return touchdown, which made it 14-3. McManus kicked another field goal, which made it 14-6. End of the first quarter right there. Then Steven Gostowski, he had two field goals back-to-back. Obviously on different scoring drives, he, which made it twenty to six. McManus kicked another field goal, twenty to nine, and then Dwayne Allen caught an eleven yard touchdown pass from Tom Brady, which made it twenty seven to nine, and that's how the first half ended. So you can already tell that this game was pretty much over. 
And then in the third quarter, Damaris Thomas uh, caught a seven-yard pass for a touchdown from Osweiler that made it 27-16. to Deion Lewis had an eight-yard touchdown run, which made it 34-16 New England. And then James White just capped it off with a six-yard touchdown pass from Tom Brady, which made it 41-16. And that was the end of the game. New England is now 7-2, and Denver's 3-6. and So let's talk about each team. So... New England's starting to do that thing where they look like the best team in the league and they look like no one's going to stop them. And I like how I like how they do this to us. They'll start off really shaky. They'll get blown out by Kansas City. You know how they do it. We've seen it the last couple of years. Okay, they'll do that. Then they'll probably win two and then lose another one. Like, oh, Patriots, they're 2-2. Two two. Is this it for them? Is this it for Tom Brady? Uh, who's going to step up? Is someone from the AFC East going to take over that division now? And here they are just laughing at all of us because of our optimism. Patriots, still number one team in the AFC, still number one team in the AFC East. And it's just, you can't stop the Patriots, man. I think that they're going to be in the Super Bowl once again. Like I said uh, earlier in this uh, show, in the first segment, Pittsburgh only beat Indianapolis 20-17. to And um, Pittsburgh just, yeah, I don't know what's up with them. I mean, they'll play, like they're like the anti-Patriots. They'll play well in the beginning of the season. Start off five and one. I mean, the uh, Steelers are still seven and two, so there's really no reason to talk down on them. I'm not trying to or anything, but the Steelers will win, um, play all their good games in the beginning of the season, and then towards like the second half of it, they'll start like they'll start they'll keep winning games, but for some reason they're just not destroying teams how they were in the beginning of the season. So that's why I call them the anti Patriots. I'm, I'm sure that um, these two teams are going to see each other in the AFC Championship. Uh, both of them are going to win their division. It's going to be Buffalo and Miami competing for that wild card spot, which is actually going to be pretty interesting now that uh, Buffalo's 5-5. Five five. If Miami wins to a Monday night against Carolina, they'll be 5-4, and four, and they'll take over that sixth spot right there. So that's going to be something to look out for. But uh, Pittsburgh's going to win their division, I'm sure of it. Let me see the standings real quick. Uh, I think they should be at least two games over. Oh, they're three games over Baltimore. Baltimore's 4-5. and five, So, yeah, that division's locked up unless Pittsburgh has the ultimate just downfall of downfalls, which I doubt they will. But anyway, yeah, the Patriots, like I said, they're starting to hit their stride. They're seven and two. They're laughing at all of us because we all doubted them. Let's see, they beat, yeah, they beat Denver by a bunch last week. They beat the Chargers. The week before that, they beat the Falcons. Then they beat the Jets, Tampa. They lost to the Panthers. They beat the Texans, the Saints. Lost to the Chiefs. So. Yeah, Tom Brady's finally doing his thing, and he's doing that thing where, you know, he's going to look like an MVP candidate, and there's a good chance that he wins it. Right now, it's Carson Wentz, who's the front runner, I think, but all he has to do is, do is lose two more games, and then probably going to be Tom Brady once again in the front running for MVP. And let's see, I might be drawing a blank right here, but as of right now, I think it's going to be Carson Wentz and Tom Brady are like the only true people competing for the MVP award right now. Let's see, am I missing anyone? I mean, Alex Smith is a name you can throw in there, but, I mean, Kansas City's lost three of their last four, so they're trying to figure things out. Um, Kareem Hunt was a nice little story for a few weeks. Now he's finally coming back down to earth. Let's see. Who else? Are we missing anyone? I feel like we are. I don't think anyone from the Rams can win it. Jared Goff has been good. He's probably going to win most improved player. Um, let's see. Let's see. Drew Brees? No. Yeah, I th unless I'm drawing a... Yeah, it's going to come down to Tom Brady or Carson Wentz. I'm not sure if I'm just drawing complete blank or it's just how it is. But, yeah, I think the MVP award's going to come down to those two. And, like I said, Carson Wentz needs to keep up his play, which I'm sure he will because he's been playing really well so far this season. But, I mean, if he loses a couple more games and the Patriots just keep winning, then an MVP award um, is probably going to go to Tom Brady. Deshaun Watts is someone who probably had a chance at winning it even as a rookie. That guy was just amazing just throwing lights out just you couldn't stop him at all but yeah like i said tom brady carson wentz that's probably gonna it's gonna come down to mvp between those two no one else i mean i could be missing someone if i am leave a comment but uh yeah i think that that's gonna come down to those two but uh, let's talk about the denver broncos for a little bit uh they are free fallen i think that's a song too huh? pretty too young i think to remember whether or not it is but sounds like something that would be a song but yeah denver is currently in shambles they have no decent quarterback uh that's it yeah they have no decent quarterback they literally have a great team uh it's just a quarterback position is holding them back big time and i'm sure that they're going to throw paxton lynch out there eventually but it's not going to work out uh denver should just keep osweiler out there i feel 
Let me see what their schedule is looking like. Uh, we'll see what kind of pick they should have. Ooh, they play the Bengals next week, and Denver's actually already favored for that one by two and a half. So that's gonna be that's gonna be a boring game right there. Try not to be too negative because I know that it's the football show. Watch football, all that stuff. But yeah, Denver and Cincinnati. That's in Denver, so Denver might actually be able. To, you know what? No, Bengals are probably gonna pull that one out. They're a boring team to watch too, but they still have a better team overall. I actually, got the, they got the better quarterback, and their defense is still pretty good. So, yeah, they got that. Then they got the Raiders. Then they got the Dolphins, the Jets, the Colts, the Redskins, and then the Chiefs. There's one, two, three, I guess four. Miami, I think, can beat them. But, yeah, so there's like three games where I think that they can compete. I'm not even going to call them winnable games just because Denver has just been terrible so far this season. Uh, the defense really hasn't looked that good. Von Miller, I don't think, I uh, haven't really been familiar with his stats so far this season, but not really hearing about him too much. Uh, the keep to leave, Chris Harris, they still do their job pretty well. But uh, yeah, like with the, you can't win games without a good quarterback. That's just how the league goes. It's never going to change. Um, look at the Patriots, for example. Okay, you throw Tom Brady out there, you could probably throw me out there at receiver, and I'll probably get a catch or two, and we'll still win the game. Uh, Tom Brady's a guy who makes everyone around him good. Uh, the Steelers, they play, yeah, when Ben Roethlisberger's not out there and they have Landry Jones backing him up, I'm not, I, don't think, I don't even think he's the backup anymore. That guy was just brutal as a backup quarterback for Pittsburgh. I know the fans weren't too happy with him. I think he might be Joshua Dobbs from Tennessee, who's their new backup. I can't remember his first name's Joshua, but I know his last name's Dobbs for sure. But, yeah, he's the backup. And whenever you see Be- uh, Big Ben go down for a team like that, uh, uh, they have like stars, like good players. They have Antonio Brown, Le'Veon Bell, Juju's a good player, and I know that Roethlisberger hasn't really gone down at all this season. But like the last couple, I'm, yeah, I'm basing this off the last couple. Is like he goes down, and then the offense just instantly just it turns into the Denver Broncos offense. Okay, you see Antonio Brown's production go way down, and just everything around in the offense just just bad. So yeah, you're never gonna win in this league unless you have a decent quarterback. I'm not gonna say a great quarterback. I mean. If you have a great quarterback, then you have a chance of going deep in the playoffs and all that good stuff. But yeah, like you need a decent quarterback in this league to at least be competitive and win ball games and at least maybe complete compete for a wild card spot. Maybe the division if you're playing in the AFC South. But uh, sorry about the shot from the shot I just took at them. But uh, yeah, it's just Denver is a disappointment. I'm sure they're going to draft a quarterback next year. Uh, look out for Josh Rosen. Doubt that they're going to have a pick high enough for. Sam Darnold. Actually, you know what? Look out for Josh Allen, the kid from uh, Wyoming. Hasn't had the greatest uh, statistical season uh, so far in college football. And he's not really someone that's been talked about. But uh, he's a quarterback where scouts, like if you read what they're saying about him, like scouts for some reason, they love this guy, okay? Everyone else, they'll look at stats, all that. But for Josh Allen, he gets a pass for some reason because of his mechanics and how he throws the ball. So... Maybe obviously, I mean, scouts are out there because they know the they know the game, and I'm out here talking about it because I just like to talk sports. So they're just obviously going to know more than I do. But I mean, maybe they're seeing something I don't. But like I say, yeah, most scouts when they're talking about him, even NFL draft writers, they they say, oh yeah, don't look at his stats or anything like that. Uh, look at his mechanics, how he throws the ball, and he's pretty much, I guess, I got to be careful with this. He's similar to. I'm not even going to say it. I'm not, yeah, I'm not going to say it. I was going to say he's similar to Carson Wentz. I'm not even going to go there. Josh Allen is Josh Allen. Uh, like I said, I didn't say it, so don't go out there say, Don't go out there telling everyone that I compared uh, Josh Allen to Carson Wentz. That was actually a bad idea. Good thing I saved myself there. Always think before you speak. But, uh, yeah, Josh Allen is probably someone that's going to end up on Denver. I think Josh Rosen and Sam Darnold are going to go top four, top three maybe. Let's see. Niners got Jimmy G, so I'm not I'm not even sure if they're gonna keep him after this season. I'm not even sure if he wants to be there after the season. I'm sure that uh the 49ers haven't really put out a product out there that makes him excited for the future, but and then the Browns definitely are gonna take a quarterback unless they just do a complete one eighty and it wouldn't be too surprising. I gotta I gotta calm down on the Browns. I'm gonna talk about them later on in the show. But yeah, the Browns, I'm sure they're gonna pick uh take Sam Darnold or I'm not even sure, actually, um, if he's going to come out if the Browns have the first pick. I remember uh, about a week ago, maybe a couple weeks ago, it was reported that he might not come out if the Browns have the first round pick. So we'll see how that goes. But yeah, Josh Rosen is probably going to go pretty high. Darnold, if he comes out, will go high. Josh Allen probably will go top 10 to a team like Denver. I think that like 
I'm not a betting man, but if I had to put something on it, I'd say that, you know what, Josh Allen is going to go to Denver. But, yeah, we'll see how that all goes. But Denver definitely needs a quarterback. They have a good team. They got Sanders. And I also saw that uh, they might be trying to move on from C.J. Anderson, too, because they're really not utilizing him enough, and they're paying him all kinds of money. So we'll see how that all plays out. But, yeah, like I said, New England good, Denver bad. New England probably going to make it to the Super Bowl. Tom Brady might win the MVP. Carson Wentz is literally the only guy, I think, that can challenge him for that. And actually, actually right now, I think Tom Brady is the one who's challenging Carson Wentz for it, if that makes sense. I think Carson Wentz is the front runner still. And Denver is not going to win too many more games, many more games, uh, for the rest of the season because of their quarterback play. So, yeah, look out for Josh Allen uh, from Wyoming to get drafted by Denver next season. If I get that one right, then I will pick your lotto numbers personally. But uh, yeah, so that's how this uh, second segment uh, is going to finish up. Really had a lot of fun talking about both teams. It's always good to talk about a good team and a bad team because there's always a lot of good content. Next up, we're going to talk about Miami going into Carolina for the Monday night football game. We're going to preview that one, say some good things about Carolina, might say some good things about Miami, might say some bad things. But yeah, we're going to do that. And then I can't wait till segment four. We're going to talk about pretty much anything that comes to mind um, in the NFL. Probably talk about the University of Miami for a little bit, but uh, maybe some college football. So stay tuned. It's going to be a fun rest of the show. Are you looking for help for your fantasy football team? Check out the GSMC Fantasy Football Podcast. Get today's best advice on who to start, who to sit, even who you should draft. From sleeper picks to red-hot lineups, they got it all covered for you. That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash fantasy-football-podcast. We'll cover traditional leagues, dynasty, PPR, even IDP leagues. When you need fantasy help, there's just one show to hit up. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow Follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. SMC football podcast last segment we talked about Patriots the Denver Broncos that went over pretty much the game gave stats uh, for each team went over the scoring summary said some good things about New England said some good things about Tom Brady said some bad things about Denver said some promising things for their quarterback situation talked about uh, quarterbacks they could go after once again watch out for Josh Allen uh, heading to Denver in the draft I honestly feel like that's a that's a perfect I, I, I've never been so sure about anything in my life I really think that Josh Allen is going to end up there I don't know why maybe it's because Denver is like a country type of rural place place and so is Wyoming maybe that's what I'm connecting maybe I'm thinking uh, John Elway thinks that he can turn Josh Allen into one of the best quarterbacks for that team because uh, like I said scouts are really hyping him up because of his mechanics and just how he throws the ball and just pretty much all that because like I said earlier he really isn't putting up too many good stats um, for Wyoming, but yeah, I feel like that's just one that it's, it's going to happen. Like I said, if I get that right, you need your lot of numbers picked. I'll pick them. Probably going to be wrong about that. But if I get this one thing right in my life, I'll be happy. So yeah, that's how that goes. Let's talk some Monday night football. Now it's going to be Miami heading into Carolina. Carolina is currently the favorite as they favorite as they should be. They're favored at eight and a half points. If you're a betting man, that's a pretty big spread right there. So I don't know, but yeah, so far this season, Jake Cutler, there's been a lot of talk about him so far. I probably like to say I follow Miami closely, but um, so far that experiment for Adam Gase it hasn't worked out as well as everyone thought it would. And I'm not sure if everyone thought it would work out, except for Miami fans, because uh, Jake Cutler's always been known to be a gunslinger, just throwing the ball out there, pretty much eyes closed, off the back foot. Hopefully you catch it. That's pretty much how he's lived his career so far, played in his career so far. And uh, sometimes it's worked out a couple of times so far for him. I mean, Miami's been a team who the offense is like one of the worst in the league, probably the worst. I can't remember exactly that Oakland game. might might have bumped him up a couple of spots. But yeah, Miami is just a team where 
They're a very odd team. They win one game, you're like, oh, maybe Miami's going to be challenging for the wild card spot. They lose a game, oh, yeah, Miami's a bad team. So, yeah, like I said, it's just been one of those kind of seasons. I mean, after the hurricane that hit uh, Florida, they had a use week one as their bye week because they couldn't play in Tampa Bay, obviously. I think that was a home game. I mean, either way, they wouldn't have been able to play the game. So, since both teams play in Florida. But, yeah, right now, Miami, just with how bad they've been playing, they're still 4-4. Four and four. Carolina, I'm a team that, or that's a team that I don't really talk too high about. And you know what? I apologize for that, Carolina fans, if you're out there listening. Uh, Cam Newton's really stepped up his play ever since he started taking off with the ball a lot more. Carolina 6-3. and three. Let's see, what, the, what are they in the division? Carolina is currently, uh, let's see. Or actually, ooh, they're a game back in New Orleans. So they're in the wild card spot. And let's check the wild card then. Yeah, so they got the sixth wild card spot right now. They're right behind Seattle, who's also six and three, and Atlanta's in the seventh spot right there, currently on their heels, about a game behind right now. So, if Carolina wins this one, they'll be right a game, a game, or actually a half game back of New Orleans. So this is a game for both that both teams really need. Miami right now, they're four and four. Baltimore, they're in the seventh spot right now, which is out right outside the playoffs picture. Uh, Baltimore is right behind them at four and five. Oakland's four and five on a bye. The Jets just lost, so they pretty much knocked themselves out, I think. So that uh, that wild card spot, it's going to come down to Buffalo, Jacksonville, I guess Tennessee, because uh, Jacksonville or Tennessee is going to win the division. I think that one of them is going to get a wild card spot, unless uh, one of them just, like I said, pulls the downfall of all downfalls. It's going to come down to Tennessee, Jacksonville, Buffalo, Miami. I'm going to take, you know, I'll leave Baltimore in there just because it's Baltimore, and then watch out for Oakland too. So those, let's see, what is that, six teams? Yeah, those six teams are going to be fighting for two spots. Like I said, one of those six from the AFC South is going to get that division spot, and I think one's going to get the wild card spot so in reality i'm saying one two three yeah four teams are going to be competing for that six spot right now buffalo is going down i keep saying that they're five and five earlier i apologize for that right now they're five and four but uh yeah if miami wins they'll be five and four and they'll be in that they'll take over that six spot so uh like i was saying earlier though jake cutler so far this season he's thrown for 1306 yards 10 touchdowns five interceptions cam newton is thrown for 1978 yards 10 touchdowns and 11 interceptions so that's not good uh, miami's current leading rusher still for the season is jhi but we all know he's playing for philly so we're gonna see if damian williams and Kenyon drake can have another solid game i mean Kenyon drake had a fumble last game so that really hurt them in that game but he still played okay i guess if you just want to completely forget about the fumble but we'll see how those guys go uh jarvis landry's currently miami's best receiver he's got 56 receptions 430 yards four touchdowns uh, it's actually kind of funny too. Calvin Benjamin plays for the Bills, still the leading receiver for uh, Carolina. Can you even call him that? But yeah, uh, I guess Devin Funches would be the new uh, best receiver on that team. Christian McCaffrey, I think he still leads the team in receptions for them. And then Jonathan Stewart's currently their leading rusher at 121 yards or 121 carries, 350 yards, and one touchdown. But uh, McCaffrey's just going to see a bigger role once it all. So once it's all said and done, I wouldn't be surprised that this is like the end of Jonathan Stewart in Carolina. I'm not even sure what its uh, contract looks like, but you know how the NFL is. They don't care about your contract. They'll just cut you whenever they want, and they don't care if they got to pay you whatever. But, uh, yeah, so this game is going to be an interesting one, okay? Miami's offense probably had their best game of the season last, uh, last week. Uh, Jake Cutler had his best game of the season last week. Devontae Parker came back. I said for Carolina, Cam Newton's been playing really well. He's taken off of the ball. That's going to be the X, the, 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 it, would you call that an X factor? Yeah, I'm going to say that's the X factor for the game, okay? Miami being able to contain Cam Newton. If Cam Newton's able to just pretty much sit in the pocket and if there's nothing open, boom, take off, then Miami is going to, it's going to be a brutal game for Miami, okay? They really need, both teams really need this game. Like, it's just, ah, this is going to be a fun game. I can't wait for it on um, Monday night. It's going to be a really fun game just because, like I said, both teams, they need this win. Carolina just to keep up with New Orleans. And if they lose, like I said, uh, Atlanta's currently 5-4. and four. You really don't. Atlanta's been a weird team so far this season, but you don't want to let them hang around for too long. You really want to start building ground off of them. Plus, if, uh, how did you say, if Carolina wins, I'm sure they'll um, hop into that fifth spot for the wild card over Seattle since Seattle's currently 6-3. and three. And, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's how sports works. But, uh, yeah, Miami needs this win. If they win, they'll be 5-4. and four. Everything will be happy in Miami land. They'll be in the sixth uh, spot for the wild card. And they got Tampa Bay next week. So this would be a big win right here. But, uh, yeah, I think it's going to come down to the defense, Miami's defense, containing Cam Newton and just not giving him any room to take off. Because Cam Newton so far as a passer, like I said, I read off those uh, passing stats. I'll read them off one more time. 
1,978 yards, 10 touchdowns, and 11 interceptions. So your boy Cam Newton has 11 interceptions, um, and that's more than his touchdowns, obviously. Math is fun. But, um, yeah, so they really got to contain him. Don't let him get out um, get out and run the ball. If he does that, they're going to have a field day against Miami's defense. And uh, I'm really curious to see how Miami's defense handles Christian McCaffrey. So far, uh, Ray Malaluga, Lawrence Timmons, and also, actually, you know what? Kiko Alonso got burned against Jared Cook. Or, yeah, Jared Cook. Pretty sure it's Jared Cook. Uh, against Hoken last week as far as covering him. So, I mean, you're probably going to see Lawrence Timmons or Ray Malaluga following Christian McCaffrey a lot. So, I'm really curious about that matchup. McCaffrey versus Miami's linebackers. I'm not too worried about... Uh, or, I'm not, I don't think a big matchup. I think Miami's corners can handle... Um, how do you say? Carolina's receivers. And... Uh, on the flip side of the ball for Miami's offense, I think it's going to be interesting to see how the linebackers Todd or Thomas Davis, Todd Davis plays for Denver. It's a Sac State alum right there, but uh, yeah, Thomas Davis. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see how him and I think Luke uh, Luke Keekley's been back. I can't remember exactly. I can't remember really been paying too much uh, attention to Carolina, but yeah, it's going to be interesting how the, their linebackers deal with um, deal with Kenyon Drake and Damian Williams because those are like. Uh, those are like Christian McCaffrey backs right there. They can run the ball, but they're also um, they also they also pose the threat of receiving the ball out of the backfield and pretty much uh, being playmakers. So it's going to be interesting to see how uh, the linebackers deal with that. Miami's offense they're going to be without Jawan James for the rest of the season, I believe it is. I think they put him on IR. I can't remember exactly, but uh, Miami's offensive line is really going to need to step up if they're going to have any chance to just pretty much compete in this game. Uh, they need to give Jay Cutler time to do his thing. Last, like I said, last week against uh, last Sunday night, actually against Oakland, he had a, probably his best game. No, he did have his best game of the season. That's no doubt. And uh, Carolina's corner, Carolina's secondary against Miami's receivers is going to be a fun matchup to watch too. Jarvis Landry, he always shows up for the big games. Um, and Devontae Parker is just a uh, that's a weird. He's a weird player to me. He'll play good in the first quarter, and you're like, "Oh wow, Devontae Parker, he's gonna have a good game." Second and third quarter come, he just disappears, and then the fourth quarter quarter comes, and that's when he picks it up again. So he's pretty much a first and a fourth quarter type of player. Really needs to pick it up and keep him going for four quarters. Because if you if he was able to do that, then he'd be probably no. I'm not even gonna say it, but he'd be a pretty good receiver. Kenny Stills has got that speed to where if you're not um, with him step for step, obviously he's going to burn you and he's going to um, catch a TV, TD over you and he's going to take it to the house. So yeah, those are going to be interesting matchups, but I think this game is going to come down to um, whether or not Miami's defense can contain Cam Newton and keep him throwing the ball. If they keep him throwing the ball, then I think Miami's going to have a really good chance of winning this game. Like I said, they'll be 5-4 and four if they win. They'll take over the sixth spot in the wild card, but I'm not too sure if they're going to be able to do it. Miami has never really done too well with um, quarterbacks who uh, who take off. I remember last year against uh, San Francisco, last season I believe it was, um, how do you say, Ka Colin Kaepernick was a quarterback for the Niners at that time, and the 49ers were a bad team. Like They weren't winning too many games. I can't remember the record exactly, but yeah, they weren't a good team. Miami was... Uh, Miami actually had their best season. Ryan Tannehill was having a career year, so you were thinking, oh yeah, Miami going to beat uh, San Francisco easily. But uh, they had trouble that entire game, and I think this final score was 31-24. to And it was because that game was so close because of the fact that Colin Kaepernick pretty much, whenever he needed to move out the pocket and run, he did that. So Miami struggled big time dealing with that. So yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how they deal with Cam Newton. If Cam Newton's able to get out the pocket and take off with the ball or at least uh, make Miami worry a little bit, then they're going to have probably no problem winning this game so it's going to come down to Miami's defense versus Cam Newton I feel it's going to be an interesting game uh let's look forward for both teams Carolina after this week they got they got the Jets and then the Saints so I mean if Carolina wins beats Miami they'll be seven and three I have no doubts that they'll beat the Jets so that's eight and three right there and then they got the Saints who will probably be up there with them and they got the Vikings right after the Saints too so they really need to pull out these next two games for a W Let's see, Miami has Carolina this week, and then they got Tampa Bay. So if Miami wins this one, um, they'll be 5-4. and four. Then you got Tampa Bay, who's a bad team, and it's a good chance of going 6-4 and four before you play the Patriots, who are currently 7-2. and two. And then they got Denver after the Patriots, and then the Patriots once again, and then it's Buffalo, the Chiefs, and then Buffalo. So this is a really big team, uh, game for both teams. Miami has struggled big time in primetime. Uh, they're currently 1-8 in their last nine primetime games, I believe. And uh, Carolina, I think that they're three and one in their last 
for a Monday night games. I can't remember what their last loss was. I saw that stat earlier this morning, but like I said, I can't remember exactly what it was, the stat, or who they lost to, I mean. But yeah, they were 3-1 and one in the last four Monday night games. So it's going to be interesting to see how it all plays out. It's going to be a fun game, I feel. I'm going to go... It's going to hurt, but I'm going to pick Carolina for this one. Uh, just based off of because they're the better team right now. But uh, like I said, it could go either way. If Miami's able to contain Cam Newton, then it can go their way. But yeah, my pick right now is Carolina. Uh, let's see, score, I'm going to go. It's not going to be a high-scoring game. I'm going to go, actually, you know what? What am I thinking? I'm going to go 21-17. That's, yeah, that's my score right there, Carolina 21, Miami 17. But we'll see how it all plays out. But yeah, it's going to be a fun game to watch. Again, it's Monday night on ESPN. 5 o'clock Pacific time, 8 o'clock Eastern. So check out that game for the next segment, which is always my favorite segment to do because I pretty much get to talk about whatever it is that comes to mind. So uh, next segment, we're going to talk about probably Bob McAdoo, talk about the Browns, talk about the 49ers. Let's see. We'll probably say some, talk about some good teams too. Probably um, mention college football a little bit briefly. So yeah, stay tuned. It's going to be a fun last segment. We'll be right back. Check out the show that's built on the MMA. From the UFC to extreme cage fighting, they got the fights covered. Check out the GSMC MMA podcast. Get the latest news on past or upcoming fights. Join us as we talk to and about some of the biggest names in the MMA, past, present, and future. When it's the fight game, there's just one show to check out. GSMCpodcast.com backslash MMA dash podcast. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit G- GSMCpodcast.com for more info. GSMC football podcast. If you missed that last thing when we talked about, or I previewed the Monday night football game between uh, Miami and Carolina. And before I even get into this next uh, next time, I just want to say that this little intro song that's playing, it's about to end right now. I feel like this is like the perfect uh, little intro for the last segment. I don't know why. I might be just a weird guy thinking about it. But yeah, it's just something I've always thought about. But yeah, um, like I said, last segment, we talked to uh, Monday night football, Carolina versus Miami. Miami's uh, winning. One one and eight in their last nine games on primetime, and Carolina is currently three and one in their last four games for Monday night. So we'll see how that one plays out. I picked Carolina in that game, but uh, yeah, let's talk some pretty much news, notes, anything interesting going on in the NFL, and we'll talk about college football. Actually, let's get started with college football. Let's give college football some love. So I'm just gonna go out and say it: uh, the U is back. I know uh, we love to do that. Uh, who's back with Texas? And I feel like that happens every year. And it's honestly kind of kind of annoying. Like Texas is just Texas is never back. Okay, I know it's fun to say, but the real team that's back is the U. They played Notre Dame. I watched that entire game with my dad, and that was just a fun one to watch. Uh, Miami just Notre Dame just I don't know what it was. It was just a blowout. It was forty-one to eight. Miami just simply dominated. They look like the old U. And again, I was born in 96, so I really don't know too much about the old U, but I got to watch those ESPN 30 for 30s. So I got a little glimpse of what what it was like. But if if it was anything um, like this team is anything like it was back then, then people should be excited. I always thought when Miami went back to was what I think about now, but when Miami uh, changed, shifted from that whole culture that they had in the 80s and 90s and probably the early 2000s, from about 2002, I think it was, is when they lost to Ohio State in the championship. Uh, they really try to make their program into a normal one, like sort of like, uh, yeah, just a normal program, one that doesn't celebrate or just anything like that. That's just when the the U started going down. But now you see with the turnover chain, uh, they're starting to get that swagger right there. So you know what? The U is going to be a fun team to watch, and that defense is incredible. Uh, I heard a lot that uh, Notre Dame so far this season hasn't really turned the ball over, and that's exactly what they did all game. Just the Miami's defense just was just – Notre Dame had nothing. They threw in a different quarterback um, after Wimbush came out in the – I think it was the second quarter he came out, and he had, he had to come back in because the other quarterback they threw out there just really couldn't do much. So, yeah, the U just pretty much dominated. They're 9-0 right now. I, I'm almost positive that they're going to be in the top four after this week for the playoff. 
Uh, Georgia lost to Auburn. They got blown out 40 to 17. Uh, that just makes me even more excited for the Iron Bowl uh, at the end of the college football season against Alabama and Auburn. College football, SEC regular season, I guess you want to call it. I'm not too good on my college football lingo. I'm not sure how they treat it all with all the title games and then uh, the playoff and all that. But, uh, yeah, Georgia lost that one, so they're not going to be ranked number one. They'll probably fall out of the top four. Wisconsin beat Iowa 38-14, to and Alabama had a bit of a scare. They scored a touchdown. Let's see, they scored a touchdown with how much time left? I think it was around, let me double check. Yeah, 25 seconds left. Alabama scored a touchdown, which made it 31-24. to And Mississippi State is always that team that gives Alabama a lot of trouble. But, yeah, pretty much. Oh, yeah, Oklahoma beat TCU, too. So you're going to probably see uh, Oklahoma and Miami jump into the, actually, I don't know. I mean, maybe we'll see Clemson fall out the top four and fall to fifth. I really think that Oklahoma and um, Miami belong or actually, no, yeah, I forgot. Georgia's the number one team. Notre Dame's the number three team. So, yeah, Miami and Oklahoma should jump into the top four. So uh, that's going to do it for college football talk right there. We'll talk a lot more about college football on the sports podcast on Tuesday. But let's get into some NFL. Let's go on a quick little rant about the Browns. So, like I said earlier, they had it uh, They had it, uh, ball down near a third, 30 the three yard line, fourth yard line, somewhere around there, right next to the goal line. Thirteen seconds left, no timeouts, and they ran a QB sneak. Uh, I think Hugh Jackson came out and said that Deshaun Kaiser audibled for that play. And uh, come on, Cleveland, what are we doing here? That's gonna be my my phrase for Cleveland every time they mess up. What are we doing here, Cleveland? Because they just surprise us. Not even surprise us. Should we even be surprised anymore by the stuff that they do? I mean. Honestly, I think that's time that this franchise cleans house once again. I'm not even sure how many times they've done that. But, yeah, it's just running a QB sneak on three-yard line with 13 seconds left. No timeouts. I mean, if Deshaun Kaiser did audible for that play, what are you thinking there, guy? You got uh, it. Just, it's just frustrating. I want Kaiser to do good. He was one of my favorite quarter- quarterbacks coming into the draft, and I just want him to do good. But he's making it really difficult. And the Browns um, have played just poorly so far. So poorly that I don't even know how Miles Garrett is doing for them so far this season. Miles Garrett was like their number one pick. Supposed to be one of the best uh, one of the best prospects probably of all time coming into the draft. And I'm not even sure how the guy's been doing just because um, Cleveland will do that to you. It's where they play so bad so you just forget about, oh yeah, they got Miles Garrett. Like they got Jabril Peppers who's also been good. Oh yeah, Miles Garrett. Let's see how many games has he played so far this season. I think I got it right here. Uh, yeah, he's played, uh, at, uh, he's played four games so far, I believe it was. And he's got four sacks in four games. He's got 12 tackles. Actually, I think 16 tackles. Yeah, 12 tackles. So he got 12 tackles, four sacks in four games. And uh, I'm not even sure how completely right those are because I just got those off of Google right now <laughs> as I was looking. But uh, either way, if those are the just if it hasn't been updated after Sunday's game, I mean, still those are really good stats right there. And actually, they have been updated, so yeah, those are right, I believe. But yeah, Miles Garrett's been playing well so far. But we're not gonna talk about him. You don't want to know why? Because Hugh Jackson and the rest of those guys on the Browns are just giving us other things to talk about. It's not fu- it's it's a lot funner to talk about the Browns mishaps and. Um, and uh, just pretty much anything that goes bad for him. It's a lot of good content right now. Like I said, it's just funnier. I mean, like I said, we should we talk about Miles Garrett and how good of a season he's been having so far since he's been back. And it's just, uh, Cleveland's just taking it away from him. I'm not even sure how Jabril Peppers has been doing so far this season. I was really interested to see how he was going to play. But uh, yeah, just, that's my little rant on the Browns right there. Let's see, who else should we talk about? Oh, also, it looks like the NFL owners are thinking about invoking a clause i'm not sure what clause is what is or what clause it is or what the clause says exactly but there's a clause i guess in the cba i'm not even sure there's a clause that where the owners if they want they can uh, do a procedure like a t- type of procedure where they move to take away the cowboys from jerry jones and the nfl is it's a crazy place right now for being honest here Got the whole Ezekiel Elliott that's been going on, and we're not too sure. Papa John, (laughs) yeah, the guy from Papa John's uh, talked about taking away his ad revenue or something like that. And then now we got this, the owners are thinking about, um, I think it was Mike Florio from um, Pro Football Talk, I think, who uh, reported on this. Yeah, so the owners are thinking about taking the Cowboys away from Jerry Jones. And if I'm Jerry Jones, I'm calling their bluff. You can't, Jerry Jones is, 
just that's a no no. I, I don't go against like I would never go against Jerry Jones. Jerry Jones is that guy in the NFL. He's that owner. When I say that owner and that guy, that just means he's the top. Like he's the top guy. He's the alpha of the NFL owners, and we all know it. I highly doubt that they're gonna go through with this. I'm probably just leaking it out there just to make Jerry a little bit scared because I know he's been trying to halt that. Um, he's been trying to halt that whole Goodell extension, and like I said, I'm not even sure why. Probably ha- might have to do with Ezekiel Elliott. And might have to do some other things, but like I said, I'm not just really going to speculate on it, but I highly doubt that the owners would go through with this. Cowboys bring a lot of money into the NFL. Jerry Jones brings a lot of money into the NFL, and Jerry Jones, like I said, he's just the alpha out there. He's the top owner. He's the big guy out there, so highly doubt that they're going to go through with this. They're probably just threatening it just to make Jerry Jones think a little bit, but yeah, like I said, uh, don't really... Don't really see them going through with this. I saw it. I was like, hmm, good luck with that. But yeah, like I said, don't see it happening. I uh, want to give a congrats uh, to the San Francisco 49ers on getting their first win. They're 1-9. Let's see what their schedule is looking like for the rest of the season. They got the Seahawks, the Bears, Texans, Titans, Jaguars, and Rams. Ooh, I said that I wouldn't pick them at all for the rest of the season. But you know what? That Texans, that Texans and Bears game is might push me to the other side. I might pick them in those games. Uh, Tex, actually, I, don't know, I might be getting a little bit too excited. But uh, yeah, San Francisco might be able to pull out another win or two, maybe. Like I said, they got the Titans, Jaguars, Rams, and Seahawks, so they're not winning those games. I'm definitely not picking them or even thinking about it, no matter what the spread says or whatever. So yeah, the probably next couple of chances they have is against the Bears and Texans, and those games are back to back. So. Maybe San Francisco can pull one out. And let's see. Let's talk about the Giants and Bob McAdoo. They are a huge mess right now. Uh, I just got an update from Bleach Report saying that the owner gives Bob McAdoo his support. And they'll evaluate. Let me see right here. They'll evaluate his 2017 season after. Uh, That's probably just saying, you know what? Let's see. I'm reading the statement right now. It says Bob McAdoo is It's from the owner too. Giants owner. This is a... says, Bud McAdoo is our head coach and has, been, has our support. We are in the midst of an extremely disappointing season. Our performance this year, particularly the past two weeks, is inexcusable and frustrating. While we appreciate that our fans are unhappy with what has occurred, nobody is more upset than we are. Our plan is to do what we have always done, which is to not offer a running commentary on the season. It is our responsibility to determine the reasons for our poor performance. And at the end of the year, we will evaluate the 2017 season in its entirety and make a determination on how we move forward. All right. So, yeah, now that I read that, read the full statement, still a little breach report notification that I got. You know what? That pretty much makes me think, you know what? It's probably not a good idea to fire the coach midseason. So let's wait till the end of the year and we'll do that. That's what that statement tells me. Uh, maybe you got something else from that, but yeah, it sounds like, you know, we're not going to blow it up right now in the middle of the season. Let the guy finish it out. Who knows? Maybe he can, something will happen, but yeah, that statement to me tells me, yeah, wait till the end of the season and he's probably going to be gone. So that was one of those just facts. Bob McAdoo, like the first hit of first line, Bob McAdoo is our head coach. Yeah, we know. We know Bob McAdoo is your head coach. So, uh, yeah, that's one of those, looking like one of those statements to where, uh, yeah, we're going to wait till the end of the year to deal with him. So, um, but like I said, I could be just really reading into it differently and there might be a different type of message for it. But, uh, yeah, so that's how, that's how that statement went. Uh, let's see what else is there to talk about. Um, let's see. Saints. I was really high on, uh, Philly being actually, Actually, no, forget the Saints right now. Let's talk about the Vikings. I want to apologize to the Vikings, their fans, the whole organization. I uh, wasn't getting, giving them enough credit. I was really sleeping on them, thinking that they weren't going to be able to compete with the top teams. And you know what? They're a really good team, okay? They're actually a great team right now. Defense is playing amazing. Uh, Case Keenum, out of nowhere, having probably a career year for him, playing really well so far. I think that they are, what are they, 7-2, and 6-2? and two? I think they're 7-2. and two. Let me double check that. But okay, yeah. So they're seven and two right now. They're gonna win the division. Um, ooh, sorry about that. But uh, I really think that the Vikings they they're gonna be competing with these top teams. They made me eat my words this week. I picked Washington. Awful move by me. Washington's now four and five. But yeah, yeah. Uh, Minnesota is just playing really well so far. Like I was saying, Jack McKinnon's been playing well. Latavius Murray had a pretty good game on Sunday, and Stephon Diggs and Adam Thielen are just 
that's a great one-two combo right there, or one-two punch combo. I'm not even sure what the phrase is, but yeah, whatever it is, that's great. They have top two uh, really good receivers, one and two, so that's something to look out for. Let's see, who do they got coming up next? Um, let's see, coming up next, I think they got oh, they got the Rams. That's going to be a fun one right there. Rams at Vikings. Uh, I'll talk about that game as probably later on on Friday's podcast for the football show, but um. Yeah, it's just going to be... The Vikings are just a fun team to watch. Again, I'm sorry for even doubting them. That was bad on my part. And uh, yeah, as of right now, the top teams in the NFC are looking like the Vikings, the Rams, uh, the Eagles, and I think... Did I say the Saints? Vikings, Rams, Saints, and Eagles right now. Those are the top four teams. Uh, let's see. Am I missing anyone else? Uh, Seattle's now. Nah, I'm not ready to put them up there. Neither Carolina. So yeah, Rams, New Orleans, Minnesota, and Philadelphia. Those are all teams that have good chances of playing in the NFC Championship game. Um, I'm not even gonna say. I'm not even gonna say how Minnesota. I don't think that they're gonna make it that far. You know what? Minnesota has a chance of making it that far. That's what I'm gonna say. I'm not gonna doubt them anymore. Okay. So yeah, those are the four teams right now. Um, two out of those four teams are gonna be in the NFC Championship, I think. But uh, yeah, Minnesota's just been a fun team to watch. They got Teddy Bridgewater back. That was actually a pretty nice scene. Uh, before the game, after they're doing the national anthem, you see Teddy. Um, he's tearing up, and just really happy for that guy. He's one of the nicer guys in the NFL. I don't know him personally. I'm just basing this off of what he's shown the fans, I guess, so far in his career. So it's really good to see him back and healthy. And like I said, right now, Case Keenum is playing lights out. So Teddy's probably going to be the backup going forward. But if we see Teddy, that's going to be fun to see too. But that's pretty much all I got to say about the NFL for this segment. It's been a fun show. If you missed that first segment, we... Um, Pretty much every Monday for the football podcast, I'm going to recap uh, week 10, talk about the game, stats, scores, and all that good stuff. And then I'll usually just recap Sunday night football after that. We'll talk about Monday night football, like how we did uh, on the third segment. We talked about Miami at Carolina. And then the fourth segment, which is always one of my favorites, we'll pretty much just talk about anything going on in the NFL, just pretty much giving my thoughts on everything. So, yeah, it was a fun show. Thanks for listening to the GSMC football podcast. Almost messed that one up. But, yes, the GSMC Football Podcast. We'll actually be back tomorrow, Tuesday. We'll talk a lot more NFL, talk about the Monday night game after it's played. And we'll see you. We'll have another show on Friday. So it's going to be a fun week. So thank you again. Stay tuned. We'll be back tomorrow, which is Tuesday. And, like I said, going to throw it out there again. Got to keep the name out there. Thanks for listening to the GSMC Football Podcast. I'm your host, Jesse Tapia, and we'll talk to you tomorrow. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Football Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from movies to to music, from sports, to entertainment, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program.